All right, so you've had surgery and now it's time for recovery. The number one theme of this is gonna be patience. I know your surgery probably took about eight hours or probably more, maybe a little bit less, but in the end of the day, now is when your real waiting game begins. Generally speaking, every surgeon has different philosophies, different rules, and a different post-operative plan, but it should all be written down and it should all be explicit and you should be able to easily communicate with your surgeon any concerns that you may have. Part of the reason you're paying so much is for what I call the hand-holding in the process that occurs afterwards. Your first day after surgery, you should have a wrap around your head, you should be able to see your grafts where they, where they were, and you should have some slight pain in the back of your head. You should be given some steroids, some antibiotics, and some pain medication on top of a variety of other tools that can go into um, making sure your hair is as comfortable and grows as well as possible. Now, what, a couple of things to note. If you have a follicular unit transfer and an incision, obviously you're gonna have a little bit more pain and you're gonna have a little bit of bleeding. One of the most common questions we get after surgery is concerns about light bleeding afterwards. Generally speaking, if you have some light bleeding, we give you some gauze to hold pressure on your donor site for about 15 seconds to three minutes, and that generally should stop most light bleeding. Some people bleed more than others, and that's the main reason we recommend to avoid uh, anti-inflammatories like aspirin and Motrin prior to surgery. Now, uh, the first day after surgery, your head bandage is removed and you're able to keep your hair out in the open. Once your bandage is removed, you might start feeling some itching, particularly in your donor site where there's gonna be some healing, but you can also get it up front. For this, we have steroids, which can help reduce inflammation and provide a spray of both ATP, which will help stimulate your hair and recovery, and a spray of simple saline, which will help moisturize and keep that environment wet. It's because when it's dry and you get crusting is when you really experience the itching. Now. On top of that, the, the last thing you're gonna experience is concern over the follicles. You're gonna notice a lot of the hairs falling out. After about a day or two, the, hair, the, the follicles and the grafts have implanted into your scalp and they're pretty difficult to knock out unless you're actively pulling them. That being said, though you can't scrub your hair in the shower, you can certainly get it wet. You can use a uh, shampoo that your doctor will provide, but we don't want you scrubbing or putting any trauma on the area. Now, for follicular unit transfer, when you, your donor site has its own incision and stitches, that's a whole different uh, line of care that you should definitely talk to your uh, particular doctor about. Getting back to your recovery, as you notice your graft starting to take, you might notice a little bit of dots that stay a little longer than you'd like. You don't wanna pick these off, all you wanna do is moisturize them. If they're really hard and crusty, you can either use shampoo and leave the shampoo on your head for 15 minutes, or you can even use something like coconut oil or vitamin E oil to help soak that area, so it absorbs some moisture and will help promote it falling out. The crust should be not on your head any longer than two weeks, because that can delay your process of getting the new hair to grow. As you know, you won't start seeing hair grow for six months, and the final growth phase isn't complete for 18. Some of the tools that we use to help promote both an increased graft take rate and an increased amount of time before the grafts start growing include um, a solution that they're soaked in that includes your PRP, and it includes something called hypothermazole. Now, one of the, import one of the important things to note while you're being patient is to make sure you don't develop any bumps. These little red bumps can be micro abscesses. Generally speaking, they should be evaluated by your practitioner because oftentimes there's little infections from ingrown hairs underneath and a simple procedure where we take a needle and unroof it and allow that uh, bacteria to express itself is all you need to cure it. You don't really need antibiotics. Now, this is one of the downsides of having surgery in overseas, obviously that you can't do that and it should be no reason to not go over there, but I often see doctors who don't have access to their patients simply telling people to scratch their heads until they pop, and that I do completely disagree with. I think they should be managed by a physician in a sterile environment. There's gonna be a lot of questions you experience throughout, and once again, I just want to emphasize it's important to be in communication with your doctor and have an open line of discussion with them for managing your concerns. I hope you found this video helpful. Below you're gonna find some more videos that continue to go through the process of the hair transplantation.